What does familiarity with this Niners team do for you, if anything, having already played them twice? I think it, it helps personnel-wise. Uh, you know, we know all about these guys. They've done a great job defensively against us in the, in the first two games this year. Uh, so we know we've got a big challenge ahead of us. Uh, but it helps knowing who they are, who the personnel is. And I think, like everything in the league, you know, we've tried to evolve and keep getting better week to week offensively. So this week's version, uh, you know, same thing with the, the San Francisco defense. They've continually evolved. So, you know, this week's version of both teams will be a little different than the last two games. And, you know, we'll see where the thing goes. Better running the ball the last three weeks. It's been tough against San Francisco. Why? I think their front seven's as good as it gets. You know, starting with the front four, uh, the way they aggressively attack the line of scrimmage, uh, doing a great job of disrupting the flow of the offensive line, and then you know whether in their four-three personnel with the three linebackers playing great, or they've got uh, you know in their nickel personnel where they got the DBs drop down in there. They they seem to always have that that uh, good sound defensive front where they got all gaps accounted for, and they run and chase the football as good as anyone in the NFL. Kenneth Walker has shown you the last three weeks, so his ability, to, you know, I think he's averaging 26 carries over those. Yeah, he's, he's done a nice job of, you know, being durable, playing down in and down out through the course of these uh, these last few games here. And and I think like anything, like all of our guys have talked about evolving as an offense and, and continually striving to get better uh, throughout the course of the year. And Ken's done a good job of just, you know, he's still, uh, you know, in that rookie season, so to speak. But now we're 20 something games into it when you include the preseason. Uh, so you just see his game continue to evolve each week. And and we know he can make some spectac spectacular plays like he's done throughout the course of the year and and uh, ad libbing on some runs and and then and just the more the consistency down in and down out continues to show up. And, you know, again, it's not a surprise with the way he works at it, the way he studies the game, the questions he asks. So it's been a, it's been beneficial to see it and, and excited for him as he's, he's really uh, reaped the rewards of, of all of his hard work throughout the year. What do, you, what do you think is the key to having a little bit more early down success against these guys? You faced a lot of third and longs against them in these two games because you've been less successful in those early downs. But what, what needs to switch for you guys in those areas? Yeah, you really nailed it with our, you know, our goal of staying out of those third and longs, and it really goes back to some of the negative plays. You know, whether we, uh, you know, some of the movement that they've had up front, some of the different playmakers that they have on defense, you know, have gotten us off schedule on those first and second downs and created some third. And you know, we've lived in a world of too many third and ten pluses. Looking back at it, and you know. Even their third and seven to ten defense, I know, is number one in the NFL. So really trying to stay out of those, is, it all goes back to that early down efficiency and eliminating the negative plays, eliminating any pre-snap penalties, knowing that we're going on the road in a, in a noisy environment right there where the, the crowd will be ready to roll. So handling all the pre-snap uh, distractions that the crowd uh, presents there, getting in and out of the huddle, all the little things that we work in day in and day out, work on day in and day out you know, throughout the course of practice, you know, really needs to be at our best against this defense. That his press conference seemed just really loose and kind of casual today. What about his demeanor, his makeup is good for these moments where it's not going to be too big for him? Yeah, I think, you know, Gino throughout the course of his career, you know, he keeps stacking these different reps on the different situations he's been a part of. Uh, I know he hasn't, this will be his first start in the playoffs, but he's, you know, accumulated different reps throughout his experiences uh, in his career. And then he's done a good job this year of, you know, every single game, you know, whether the game was good or bad, bouncing right back to the next game with that same mindset of, of going out there and competing. And I think as a as offense and then as a team as a whole, you know, we're trying to re try to recreate these championship opportunities every single week because every game in the NFL is hard. And, and just because it's a playoff game, yeah, it's, it's bonus football. So that's the fun part of it. But as far as the championship atmosphere, the competitive nature of the game, you know, that's the week in and week out life in the NFL. So I think Gino's done a good job of grasping that, understanding that, and going out and getting ready to put his his best foot forward this game. Have you noticed him looser this week than previous? Uh, I don't know if I'd say looser. I just think, like, I think he's been steady. I think he's been enjoying the moments. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, getting a chance to be in the po uh, postseason, you know, the game's going to be uh, exciting. It's going to be energy filled. Uh, and I think also taking that moment when the regular season ends to getting into the postseason uh, of, of enjoying that, hey, you've done a good enough job to put yourself in this position. And, and that's a good start. Now let's go ahead and, uh, and attack the weekend. Uh, what are you seeing from the last couple of weeks in the Reds? In the red zone, you know, especially this last week, you know, we talked about we've run the ball well, but would love to be able to run the ball even better when we get down in the red zone there. Uh, you know, I think it, it prohibited us from scoring a few extra points in this past game there. And I think like anything else, you know, those third down known passing situations in the red zone are always going to be tough. But I think just keeping playing and, and, and keeping as many shots on goal, so to speak, in the red zone as we get through these games, you know, and executing, but all coming back to being efficient in the red zone in the run game like we've been in the field. Last week with Dariq, you mentioned it was the more you could do when we saw him as a fullback on a couple of those plays. 
did you anticipate he would be this versatile when he got to Seattle? Was there something that he showed you, or has that been something throughout the year? Yeah, I think with Derek, you know, coming from a, a smaller school and, you know, playing a little bit at, you know, multiple positions as his offense in college evolved, uh, you know, getting him here, we knew he was a skilled athlete and then you get him in the building, know he's a smart guy and was able to, uh, you know, pick up a lot of different things in the offense. And then you see uh, his athletic ability really on display on special teams where he's continued to work. And I think he's just done a good job. You see the athlete that he is and he's continued to grow and learn and get better throughout the year. Uh, so then that just gets him more and more chances of some different things that he can do. He's shown that he can be a physical blocker. Uh, he's shown that he's obviously his speed is great. And I think his confidence is growing more and more uh, each week as he plays more and more offensively. Uh, but, you know, I think it's a great testament to his desire and, and will to work on special teams that's really put him at the forefront of the opportunities to be active and be more of a part of the offense as well. Did he play some in the back for the middle right? He played like a little offset wing stuff a little bit early on. So, yeah, moved around a little bit and then played some receiver as well. So a little bit of versatility right there. What changes in the playoffs for you or for the feel? Or what's a tangible difference in the playoffs? You know, I, I really think that, that throughout the course here, like we talked about, like really working hard at, at creating every game to be that same opportunity and then moving into, you know, different playoff experiences from the past for me, you know, I think the, the more normal, the more, uh, I guess, uh, week in, week out rhythm that you can stay in and keep the game the game, I, I think is what we're striving for. And, and really, you know, there's, there's not enough time in the week, I don't think, as a coach to really do anything different because you have your rhythm and your routine. you got your game plan and it's going to stay, especially in a week where it's a, a day shorter like this week is. You know, you have your rhythm that you've practiced really all year long and you stay in that rhythm. Uh, get into the Friday, get into the Saturday, and get ready to play. What did you do Sunday night? On Sunday night, you know, for the first half, I sat there nice and calm, and then for the second half, uh, you know, I apologized to my daughter a couple times for uh, maybe my language as I'm watching the game, getting a little excited, but we had some fun with it as a family. It was, it was really nice. My parents were in town, so we watched it all, wife and kids and parents, and, you know, I was rooting like crazy for Jared Goff and the Lions, and they did a great job, uh, gave us a good opportunity. That was done. Did you like switch into game plan mode immediately? Yeah. Then, then the like brain that? starts racing. You know. Then I did a good job of. Uh, I was proud of myself actually to be able to go to bed and get some rest. But then the next thing you know, it's watching the clock. It's 3:45. It's 3:48. It's four. Okay, let's go ahead and get going here. It's you know we're not waiting any longer. Let's get out. Let's get in in the morning and and get going and attack the day. When was the last time you watched a game on TV and were pulling for somebody like that? Oh Can man. You think of one? Yeah, I'm trying to remember uh, in New England. Uh, the year, uh, what would have been 2008, you know, I know we were rooting and, and we won an 11 win season that year and it didn't work out right at the end there, kind of the deal where, where you're rooting for someone that doesn't work out. So, you know, it's it's uh, it's always tough, you know, when you're, you're relying on someone else to help you. But I also think the benefit is we, we took care of our end of the bargain right there and, and put ourselves in position and then had a chance to have some fun, you know, rooting for that game on, uh, on Sunday night there and, and it worked out in our favor. What stands out to you, if anything, about how Gino's operated this year out of the empty formation? I think he has a good, clear vision of the defense when he's in these these uh, empty formations, and I think he did a really nice job. You know, the Rams were doing a, a good job of of kind of you know we had some explosives, and then we were kind of limited and stalled a little bit, and then when a couple of those empty plays where Gino has that big field vision and he can get right through full progressions on plays, uh, he did a really nice job with it, and he's got full command of it, sees the field well, and and gets the ball out, and, and I think our guys did a good job getting open and timing rhythm and starting with you know Colby's good catch. I know DK had one in. in one of the empty uh, formations there. So he just has a good job of, of that full field vision when we spread the field out like that. Is that just easier for quarterbacks as opposed to like the stuff where you turn your back to the defense for a little bit? Like yeah, I mean, I think it's different, you know, depending on, you know, the play actions would be the time where you do turn the back to the defense right there. And I think situationally in, in some of those games where you're running the ball well and, and those things can happen, you know, you can, you know, you shrink the read with the amount of people that you're looking at. But and when you're in an empty formation, you got all these things to deal with. So I, I think it's player by player, but Gino particularly has done a really nice job of, you know, understanding the, the coverage contours as well as the protection issues that you create when you're in an empty set and really driving that uh, from the quarterback position. Is that something you learned about him this year, or did you gather that like last year as well? Uh, I think a little combination of both, you know, especially in the uh, in the OTAs and in uh, training camp, where you really get a sense of his feel and comfort level with the the different formations and what what he's uh, what he's good at. Flip side of that, why do you think your under center runs have sometimes been better than shotgun? You know, I think. Uh, 
you know, we've executed them better at times. But I think we've had some shotgun runs that have scored. You know, Ken's done a nice job. I know we've scored a few touchdowns on some of the, the gun runs. I know against the Raiders a couple times, uh, you know, we've had some touchdowns there. Uh, so I think it's a little bit of, of, of you know, when we're under center, you do have the, the multiplicity in the run game in terms of all the different directions you can go with the run. When you're in the shotgun, you know, from a defensive perspective, you might be able to cut off a few of the runs uh, that are able to, to happen right there. But I think like anything else, I think, you know, when we're in a balance of, you know, being able to do, uh, you know, a little bit of both in terms of running the ball from under center in the shotgun, you know, always presenting those multiple looks to the defense so they're not sitting on one thing, uh, will always be when we're at our best, you know, mixing and matching those things. I know you're focused on San Fran's defense, but when you look at their offense, like what about that system um, sets guys up for yards after the catch? I think they got well. The players for you know the players are great. You know with Samuel and, and Kittle and McCaffrey. You know they got these guys that are great run after catch guys. And like like anything else, different teams around the league get a chance to watch uh, their tape as the season goes through. And I think they do a great job, Coach Shanahan, putting those guys in position to get the ball in their hand in space, whether it's their perimeter screen game, uh, you know, or their choice routes, or you know the, the ball out where they get catch and run transition opportunities for those players and and letting their natural ability take over. Guys. Thank you. Good. All right. Thank you.